Welcome to Robin of Sherwood. This first episode will not be a first time reaction. The reason is I had a couple of people over on Patreon suggest the series. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll try one episode and I'll just kind of watch it on my own, which was a mistake because it was really interesting. And I was like, okay, after watching part one, I need to stop because I want to react to this. So as a result, this will be a second time reaction to the initial part one, but it was about a year ago. So honestly, I don't remember a whole lot other than the fact I really liked the feel of it and the kind of mix of magic. And I remember I really loved Maid Marian. To give a quick background, I am a huge Robin Hood fan. My favorite is the Errol Flynn version. It was at the point where as a kid, I had a little Robin Hood costume and my parents could not get me to take it off. I would like go to the grocery store wearing the green outfit. <laughs> but that's enough of an intro. Aluxley, everyone. Remember, this is a commentary. It is not a market substitute. Please support the original, which is currently on BritBox. I mean, these are probably baddies, but you gotta respect how they're coming in. The interesting camera angles too, I forgot about that. Whoever directed this did a good job. Oh, oh right, his dad was an archer. I love the studded jacket. His father has great fashion sense. This is so pretty. Little old fashioned mill. Oh, you'll never see him again. They found such a cute little actor to play tiny Robin Hood. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a great shot there. You've lost. The rebellion's over. Where is it? Where's the arrow? Oh. 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 Oh, he's coming. Lord, it, man. Well, it can't be good that they got whatever the arrow is. So I'm guessing he has to get it back. Oh, what a great castle. Beware the hooded one. The master demands a sacrifice. A girl. Two guesses who that will be. What a location. It's so green. Much, come here. I knew it was you, you fool. Right, they're not allowed to hunt here. I remember reading in some of the 11th century rants in Anglo-Saxon about not being able to hunt in certain areas. I even did a little audio drama of my translation. You take my bow, kill the king's deer. Yeah. The king won't mind. Uh, the king will deer. mind, actually. Better to be hungry and have both your hands. Both my hands? Mm -hmm. And then he'd lock one off so you'd remember what he'd said. Um, you two, you might want to just leave the deer and run for it. Really nice sound design with the creek and then the distant horse. So ominous. Come on, March! You two just drop the deer at this point. It's my lord of Gisborne. Good. And who are you, Surf? Do you know the penalty? Yes. Don't nod. Tie them up. He's born is as pleasant as ever. My wife's folks, they came from Loxley. Mm. And they died there. And I wish that God she'd died with them. What? Why? Soldiers, drunk, mercenaries. Oh. They trampled her to death with their horses. Nice. And they laughed. Looks like the rebellion is 
back on for good reason. Okay, I think Marion was here, right? She was going to become a nun. Looks like there was quite the party last night. You don't have to lose it, Hugo. Just lower the water level. And why should I? Because the meadow on the other bank has been flooded. And you're my brother. I'm sheriff. Sure. Our blood relationship has nothing to do with it. Well, this is a terrifying entourage. The Baron de Belen. Oh. Who's Arthur? He's Arthur. Yours, man, is he? He's yeah, okay, yeah. It's now, yeah. Look, it's an escape. Yeah, yeah. Where'd we go? Yeah, what did we eat? We'd starve. Oh, it's show. Show. There's parts of it. No one will go in That's why we'd be safe. Makes you wonder what's in the forest that everyone wants to avoid that particular location, though. Oh, uh, wow. Look at this gown. It's an unusual color, too. And are now the ward of the Abbot Hugo. Yes, my Lord Baron. The Lady de Belem took her own life. Hmm, wonder why. You could take her place. Thanks, Pass. I'm honored, my Lord, but I'm afraid I can't. You'll give her to me then, when the hooded man comes to the forest. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I feel like he just wants to sacrifice someone innocent for his nefarious plans. I'll have him excommunicated! And he'll have us murdered. He's insane. They say a demon took his soul while he was in the Holy Land. Do they? Probably sunstroke. Oh, right. He was in the Crusades. It is interesting how the various Robin Hood legend TV shows bring in the Crusades because it looks like here the people that perpetrated all of that become the villains. And then there was an interesting one with the Robin Hood show a few years back, the BBC did. And in that case, Robin Hood had like PTSD from being in the Crusades, which was an interesting aspect of his character. That was an interesting show because like the last season almost felt like a filmed fanfic you know the one I mean after the thing with Marion? I did love his bow though. I actually got a replica made in Hungary of that exact recurve that Robin Hood uses on that show. I still have a bunch of the arrows. I kept those because I just couldn't help myself. This is the bow in question. It's really pretty, isn't it? You'll stay the night? Well, I'd rather not return in the dark, Robert. Those two brothers are hilarious together. They really feel like siblings. Help me! Quickly! I can't believe he fell for that. Tom, hold me. Well, that works. And now you have a weapon, too. Well, they're doing a good job making it really look heavy. Come on! Are you coming or what? You just gonna leave the old man? That doesn't seem fair. They'll never get out of here. Hey, Sorry, Arthur. I do like that we're kind of seeing him come into his own as a leader here. He didn't start out wanting it. It's just kind of circumstances drove him to it. Come on, Mutch, you got this. <laughs> That's not how you use that. <laughs> Robin, come on. Let's go. No time for heroics. Just act casual. Saunter through. Oh, um, no. Yes, yes, get something with some length on it. I just want to comment on Robin's costume right now. They got the green, the brown, but it's very homespun looking, which is great. Sometimes Robin's outfits are just a little bit too polished. Oh no, oh no. I can't remember if he gets out or not. 
This is stressful. No. Okay. Uh, climb the wall. Yep. There we go. I just have to comment. I do love the kind of organized chaos going on right now because they weren't like big, pristine, well-ordered fortifications. So I love that during this like fight sequence, there's sheep and chickens just running around. <laughs> Oh, I've actually been in a castle with this layout and I was running up that very staircase. That's cool. I feel like this is a new location though. This staircase is too wide. I think we just switched locations, but I could be wrong. But let me know in the comments, people who know their castles that are filming locations. I remember this scene was so cute. What is it? Excuse me, I'm just gonna use your window. Who are you? Your destiny. My name is Marion. Where will you go? Sherwood. I love how he just tells her. <laughs> but they won't catch me. You're like a May morning. Robin is smooth. And there's the famous hood. The hooded man. Yeah, that is such a sweet little scene. It's like instant ship. They did such a good job of kind of introducing the chemistry between those two, even though it was a quick scene. Also showing that Marion is a little bit feisty, but in like a really feminine way that I love. And she recognizes that the guys around her, like Gisborne, are just awful. And she's able to kind of sense that Robin is on the level. And obviously he's just smitten immediately for obvious reasons, because we all are. Like, <laughs> I can't really fault him for immediately giving away their location, because if you saw Marion like that, in her chemise, looking at you like that, I mean, I'd be like, I'm going to Sherwood. So mystical. Huh. Burn the hunter. Look at me. Ah, uh, looks like they are going to do the famous split arrow scene somewhere. Robin in the hood. Oh yeah, throwing bones, very traditional. He has come to the forest. That was way too fast. I mean, I realize he has a grid and he probably works with these bones a lot, but divination takes more time than that. When you're casting them, you're sitting there like, okay, this could mean that or that or that. And you just kind of write it down as it comes to you. And usually you need to throw them several times to kind of confirm and really figure out, okay, that's really what this means. I'd say the only super obvious instant form of divination I know of is dousing because it's just like broop, immediate this usually takes time to interpret but maybe we didn't see it and he cast them like three times off screen and this is just the final one and he's like yes okay I really know what's going on now I'm just gonna extrapolate that's what happened oh how pretty all right, I remember there was a staff fight in water. I'm guessing that's what's about to happen with Little John. Look at these locations. That hurts too. I've done staff fighting. It It is painful to get whacked by it. Yeah, exactly. Was it? The star, once it rubbed off in the water, like he was being controlled or something. This day of filming was either really fun or just absolutely awful. <laughs> being in water all day. Probably cold water, because this looks like an actual creek, not a set. Ah, yes. I, see, I remember some things. <laughs> Set me free. 
John Little of Hathersage. Mm -hmm. John Little? <laughs> Little John more like. <laughs> Not sure you should be lighting a fire right now with all those people after you. It's always work for a Fletcher. Mm -hmm. You still coming, Dickon? Yeah, except we need a Fletcher in our group. Can you please stay? I don't recall this bird. What do you want of me? Your life. When the Horned One possesses me, I am Hearn the Hunter. It's really interesting that they're showing different types of possession in this episode. We have the malicious kind that poor little John was dealing with, where it takes you over against your will and does terrible things. And then here we have one of the Horned One spirit who is speaking through you. And it's more of a priestly calling where you choose it. I wish I remembered which priestess gave this analogy that possession in this context you have kind of the spirit who is in the car with you or in this case would be the wagon probably either sitting next to you but you still have the driving wheel you still have complete control they're just able to speak through you then there's the one where they're at the wheel but you are still next to them in the front seat then there's kind of your way in the back which is what little John was experiencing where you have no more control or vice versa. If you're the one in the driver's seat and the spirit is way in the back, they're kind of attached to you, but not directly influencing you. And it's your choice as a priest or a priestess, which level of possession you're willing to give. I'm sorry. This is just really fascinating because I study this. So I really appreciate that. It's also not being completely demonized on the show. It's just like, no, there's different types of possession and not all the spirits are bad. Some are, some aren't. Some are just neutral, honestly. Very, very intriguing. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Great lighting effect. One of the seven swords of Wayland. Oh, a bow, that's handy. The bow. Yeah, that's harder than it looks, actually. You gotta have a lot of arm strength for that. Loxley? No, not Loxley. Robin, Robin Hood. Robin of the Hood. Nobody ran at Hastings. No, they stood and died by their thousand. But at least they died fighting. Is this the spirit of England? No. No justice? No England? We few. We happy few. We band of brothers. Ah! Fire tuck. This must be a little overwhelming, though, to non Robin Hood fans. Like, there's so many characters. Look at her beautiful braid here. That is a gorgeous cape. It deserves to be on a better person than Gisborne. Oof. Yeah, Marion right now is just like... I'm not with them. Okay? I'm just not with them. <laughs> Side note, I like the music. Kind of folksy. Don't hurt her. <laughs> There's like a string attached to it, I think. Look, it's a magic sword. Rest of you, follow me. Why would you throw a gorgeous sword like that in the bushes? It's born. It's like, you had one job, and that was to protect Marion. <laughs> one job! Ah, uh, classic Robin Hood. <laughs> like Ewoks. 
Tell him Hearn's son has claimed his kingdom. You should have killed him. You'll have to one day. True. I remembered a few scenes, but I totally forgot a lot of it. So it was kind of like watching a reaction. Hopefully you enjoyed that. As I said, moving forward, I have no idea what's going to happen. Totally new for me. I still love Maid Marian. She's so, so fun. I like the costuming. It is definitely inspired by the period, but they aren't trying to be perfectly accurate. They're just kind of giving a rough impression, but it's a pretty decent one for probably their budget. And I like the color scheme, especially in the fabric choices that they're using. You can definitely tell they didn't have a lot of time to rehearse the stunt choreography, but they definitely did the best they could was probably what time they had. I mean, these big budget films with the really slick choreography going on. I mean, they take months and months of rehearsal to get to that point. I think the big standout here for me are the locations. I think they were all just perfect, especially the woods and the waterfall and all that stuff going on was really neat. The mill location, obviously the castles. And then we got hints of the more supernatural plot line with like his father possessing, I don't know who he is. I'm just kind of guessing a priest, but I'm sure we'll find out more about his backstory later. Robin's dad, the hunter was definitely in on a whole thing that we don't know much about at this point, which I think is great. I really enjoy when there's a lore heavy show that doesn't try to just info dump in the first episode. They spent the time introducing all the characters, letting us get to know them briefly, and then just kind of hinting that there's something bigger going on. And I imagine they'll build on that with part two. The main villain is great, super evil. I really liked the two brothers and their interactions. Like that whole argument over the pond and whose land it was and how much water you can have in the pond. That was just such a sibling move. If you're on public YouTube right now, you're seeing this because we finished Blake's seven. But if you're on Patreon, I just could not wait. And I like these episodes because they're not too long. Unlike the movies that are kind of really long. <laughs> so I'm starting these reactions a little bit earlier than planned. It won't be on any set schedule. Just if I'm feeling up to doing another hour of recording, you might see more Robin of Sherwood. Also, it's my happy place. I mean, it's Robin Hood, so.